Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Math Adda with your host Shankhudeep. Today we are going to talk about a problem which is one of my favorites. I have thought about this problem since I was in school. It does not often show up in Olympiads, but it did in 1986. It uh, a version of it appeared in the Inmo. So I'm uh, seizing the opportunity to discuss it. let's read the problem first it says show that among all quadrilaterals of a given perimeter the square has the largest area this problem has other variations as well for example among all triangles with a given perimeter the equilateral triangle has the largest area among all pentagons of a given area the regular pentagon has the largest area uh, sorry given perimeter the regular pentagon has the largest area in general among all n gons of a given perimeter the largest area belongs to the regular n gon can you see a pattern here the pattern is when you approach regularity some form of regularity something is maximized there is another version which can be seen to be as a generalization of all these problems which says that among all planar figures with a fixed perimeter the largest area belongs to the circle in fact it can be stated more uh, in, a, in a more rigorous manner like this suppose you have a set of curves on the plane closed curves which have a fixed area and there is a theorem which says that closed curves always bound an area okay closed curve have an inside as an and an outside this theorem is called the jordan curve theorem it is a fascinating result so i highly recommend that you look it up so as any curve any closed curve Uh, i think there is some condition it has to be continuous or something any closed curve bounds an area you can talk about the area bounded by the interior the area of the interior right so among all curves all closed curves with a fixed perimeter the largest area belongs to the circle which is clearly some kind of a generalization of this result all these results belong to a class of problems which are known as isoperimetric problems okay and solving an isoperimetric problem rigorously requires some work you have to verify many small things in today's episode i am not going to verify all things i am going to solve this particular problem this is a very basic version of the isoperimetric problem and i will also give you some idea about how to prove the general problem for circles and uh, by the way this also has a version for volumes so among uh, all objects with a fixed surface area the the sphere has a has the largest volume and uh, this problem looks very similar but the way to prove it is very different okay this is something that you can also try if you if if you like a challenge let's start with this one no uh, let's talk a little bit about the circle version because that's very interesting so as i was saying every curve every closed curve has an interior now what guarantees that there exists a curve that actually maximizes the area that's not guaranteed okay because uh, in mathematics there is there exists a concept called supremum where something like a maximum is approached but not attained okay so to begin the proof you have to first prove that there exists a maximum then you have to prove that this maximum is a circle 
I'm not going to prove the first part, but I'm telling you, in the discussion so far, I have already told you how to prove it. Could you pick up on the hint? If you could pick up on the hint, uh, let me know in the comments. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to assume that uh, a maximum a, a maximal curve already exists, which uh, maximizes the area. Now I'm going to prove that this curve is actually a circle. Point number one, the curve is convex. Actually, uh, rigorously speaking, I should have said that the interior of the curve is a convex set. Why is that? Because if it's not convex, if it's something like this, then you can find two points, say P and Q, such that if you join the two points, then this curve, uh, this line segment here, lies outside the region. Now, if we have a situation like this, we can actually reflect the part that is in between to the other side. And consider the car, a curve which is equal to the other curve for the rest for the rest of the time and equal to this reflection curve here, this yellow curve that I have uh, drawn. This curve, the interior of this curve, clearly has a greater area and the same perimeter. That cannot be because I have assumed that there is, uh, this is the maximal curve. Okay, so the maximal curve has, has to be necessarily convex or the interior of that uh, curve has to be a convex set. Two, next we do something else. Suppose we have this maximal curve, something like this. Now take two points such that the perimeter to this side is P by 2. P is the total perimeter. And the perimeter to the other side is also P by 2. So these are two points such that the length of the, uh, the yeah, length of the curve is divided into two equal parts. Then what we do? We join these two by a line. Note that the two parts, this and this, suppose they have areas A1 and A2. These two parts actually need to have the same area. Why? Because if, suppose, A1 is greater than A2, then I can simply reflect the, this part to the other side. To get a curve which has area 2A1, which is greater than the previous area, which was A1 plus A2. And has the same perimeter, of course, because the two halves have the same perimeter. So, not possible. For the maximal curve, we have to have two parts of different area, uh, two part, parts of the same area. A1 has to be equal to A2. Why did you do this? Because this actually, this actually allows us to reduce the problem. Instead of solving for the whole curve or the whole region, we can solve for half the region. We can restate the problem as, the, as follows. You have a straight line L. Remember, it's a, it's a line and not a line segment. It's infinite. And you have a number of curves which start and end on the line. 
on the same side, of course. Like this. Now, if we, and they all have the same perimeter. Now, if we can prove that the, and, and we also uh, consider this area, which is bounded by the curve and the straight line. Among all such curves, if you can prove that the semicircle has the largest area, then we're done, right? Because uh, if the half is a semicircle, the other half is also a semicircle, the two put together is actually a circle. Okay, so this is what we are going to prove. And uh, in order to prove this, remember that circles have a property, in fact, semicircles have a property that if this is the diameter and you take any point here, then this angle is 90 degrees and the opposite also holds if you have a curve such that the angle subtended is always 90 degrees then the curve has to be a, a semicircle this is what we are going to prove suppose again we are going we are going to assume that this problem has a solution it, there is a maximal curve such that uh, there is a curve such that this area is maximized And suppose this is the curve, okay? Now I take any point here and I join these two. I'm going to prove that for the maximal curve, this angle here is actually equal to 90 degrees. Let's call it theta and we are going to make some changes here. We are going to deform the curve a little bit. Without changing the perimeter. How? Imagine that this is something like a scissors, a pair of scissors with this point as a fulcrum. This point is a fulcrum and these two parts are moving parts. So you can do something like this, okay? Or uh, you can also imagine that you are actually sliding the points A and B here on the picture. The, a and, the points A and B are fixed on the line, but you can slide them. In this way, you can change the angle, change the angle theta without changing the perimeter. Okay. So what happens if you change the angle theta? You get something like, let me draw it again. The two points A and B, the two ends A and B, go to two other ends A prime and B prime. That point, uh, let's call it theta as a C actually. That C goes somewhere else, say C prime. And the two, two arms of the scissors remain the same. I mean, the, uh, the areas of the two arms remain the same. And this has become, say, some theta plus phi now. So we, what have we achieved? We have changed the angle theta. We have managed to not change the perimeter. And we have changed the area. That's the most crucial point. And we have also not changed the two side lengths. Uh, this is a bad diagram, but uh, the side lengths, believe me, the uh, side lengths will not have changed. Okay. So suppose this side length is A and this side length is B. So this is A, this is B. Now the area of the curve, I mean, the area bounded by the curve at the straight line 
is this area plus this area plus the area of the triangle. Here, the area bounded by the curve and the straight line is again this area plus this area plus the area of the triangle. So the area of the triangle is the difference. If one triangle has larger area than the other, then the whole thing has larger the area than the other. What is the area of the first one? It is half, of, I mean, the first triangle, it's half AB sine theta. What is the area of the second triangle? It's half AB sine theta plus phi. As you can see, the area actually depends on theta. And the area is maximum when theta is pi by 2 because then sine theta is 1. For any other angle, you are able to increase the area without changing the perimeter. Okay, This might be confusing, so let me repeat the argument once more. Take a straight line. Take a curve, I'm asking, without changing the area, changing the perimeter of the curve, which curve should you take in order to maximize the area of the region bounded between the curve and the straight line? I'm assuming that there is, there is a curve which maximizes the, this area. Then I'm claiming that this maximal curve is a semicircle. Why? Because I have taken any point on the curve, I have joined the point AC and CB, and I'm saying if this angle ACB is not pi by 2, then this is not the maximal curve because then I can do that scissors thing and increase the area without changing the perimeter. That means no matter what the choice of C might be, the angle has to be pi by 2. Because that is the case when I cannot increase the area. Okay. That means theta for the maximal curve, theta has to be pi by 2 for any arbitrary choice of C. Hence, this is a semicircle. And the full curve is a circle. Fine. Now, let's come to the original problem. The quadrilateral thing. Now take a quadrilateral. Suppose the sides are A, B, C, D. Join a diagonal and take the angles to be theta and phi. If the area is A, then uh, A is half a b sine theta plus half c d sine phi which is actually less than or equal to a b plus c d by 2 similarly you can get a is equal uh, is less than or equal to AD plus BC by 2. Adding, you get 2A is less than or equal to AB plus AD plus CB plus CD by 2. And this actually can be factorized like this, A into B plus D plus C into B plus D by 2, which is A plus C times B plus D by 2. Now, this should remind you of something. A plus C times b plus d is less than or equal to a plus b plus c plus d by a 2 whole square. This is the 
inequality between the arithmetic and geometric means. And this is A plus B plus C plus D is precisely the perimeter. Okay, So it's equal to uh, P squared by 4. Therefore, A is less than equal to A plus C times B plus D by 4, which is less than or equal to P squared by 16. So, uh, we have, and, and note that this equality only holds when the sides are equal and theta and phi are both 90 degrees. Okay. So we have proven this. And apart from prov proving, we have found an inequality relation between A and P, the area and the perimeter. Such a relation is called an isoperimetric inequality. Let's say, let's see if we can do something like this for uh, the circle as well. So if the perimeter is P and the curve we are talking about is a circle, then P is equal to 2 pi r, correct? And the area is pi, area A is pi r square, which is... Uh, by the way, r equal to p by 2 pi, p by 2 pi whole square is equal to p square by 4 pi. Therefore, area is less than or equal to P squared by 4 pi. In the general isoperimetric problem with uh, irregular, I mean, random curves. Okay. But for squares, uh, for, for quadrilaterals, is A less than or equal to P squared by 16? The coefficient is uh, the multiple, the coefficient is different. Here it's P squared by 16, and here it's P squared by 4 pi. There are many versions of the isoperimetric inequality. And each of them come with a uh, different uh, coefficient. Okay. See if you can find un uh, other versions of the isoperimetric inequality. If you can, please share with us in the comments. Okay. So that's all for today. See ya. Bye bye.